Rick Strom here, another edition of Countdown to kick off with Michael Coleman, sports director of KCTV's Channel 5 News. Michael, how are you today? How you doing there, Rick? I'm doing great. Uh, let's talk about the Chiefs for a little bit. The winners of the AFC West, 7-1 yeah. at home last season. Yeah. Uh, to me, the story is with Matt Castle, and it is one intriguing story, to say the least, from his college days at USC, not starting one game, his fourth year as a starter now. He's 29 years old. How much promise do the Chiefs see in this guy? Well, they have a lot of faith in Matt Castle. He's smart. Um, I'm waiting to still see him throw and throw the long bomb, you know, to stretch the field. And with the weapons that they've drafted, Jonathan Baldwin out of Pittsburgh. They brought in Steve Breston from Arizona. So I got to think they're going to open up that playbook uh, a little bit more than they did last year. They were a little conservative, I think, on, on the pass on the receiving. Uh, end of the thing, but they had a great rushing. I mean, they led the league in rushing with Jamal Charles and Thomas Jones, and so that was a great uh, safeguard for Matt. So I'm hoping this year, and I think the team does plan to open that playbook, but as he goes, the team will go, especially on offense. You brought up the rushing, and you brought up the passing first, so let's talk about the passing. 30th in passing yards last season were the Chiefs. Yeah, exactly. With exactly. the addition of Steve Breston, as you said, Drafting of the six foot four Jonathan Baldwin, is there a clear emphasis to improve the passing game? Uh, no doubt about it. I think where Baldwin will come in handy is in the red zone. You know, he would also play because he also played basketball. Of course, he has the great leaping skills, a la practical burst. So I think in the red zone, the game plan is instead of trying to jam it down the throat uh, on the ground, is like let's let, throw it, let him jump up and catch it. Uh, but he's been, you know, so they haven't, they haven't shown that in practice yet. And they may, well, they may have done it, but we don't know about them doing it. Uh, so definitely the fact that they brought in Breston as well, they're really deep on wide receivers. they got a lot of wide receivers. And one thing about Todd Haley, you know, if, I don't know if you're aware of this, he was a receivers coach when he was with the Arizona Cardinals. So, oh, yeah. You know, that, that's, that's his thing. And, and I, know I, I know early in the season, early in the training camp, um, I made the comments that you have a lot of wide receivers, so it's how competitive do you want this to be? He says, I want it to be real competitive. He wants all the positions to be competitive, but especially at wide receiver. So the fact that they brought in these guns, these weapons, I think that speaks to the fact we want to get out of being a so, or not even a so-so passing team, a less than so-so passing team. Todd Haley, when he was with the Jets, made Keyshawn Johnson a pro bowler when he was with the Bears. And trust me, this is hard to do because I am a Bears fan. He made Marty Booker a pro bowler. And he made Terrell Owens when Haley was in Dallas a pro bowler. Exactly, now, exactly. Granted, Dwayne Bowe had a huge year last year. How come there was not a ton of production after Bowe? I, I, think, I think part of the reason was because Bowe, and, and Todd will tell you this, is still developing. So I think he wanted to throw the balls to him. And again, and that's, where the running, that's where the rushing game came in handy. You know, because after Dwayne Bowe, and to a degree with Moyaki, there's just a, a, a fast drop off of product, productivity at that position. And I think that probably speaks to why they are so receiver heavy coming into this camp. And I think part of it was guys that weren't developed yet. That's one thing about that Todd always talks about our developing players, our young players. He always makes the emphasis on developing and young and youth. And I think his, this is a deal where Bo is where, Bo's going to be just fine. You know, he's an all pro last year. And so now. They've got the safeguard again of that rushing game. That's why they brought in uh, Leron McLean, who who was a bruiser of a running back. He can block, and he also has a great set of hands. So I think you're going to see more involvement of the of the running backs in the passing game, the dump the dump offs and the little safety valves, you know, ten yards and out. And I think that's what's going to happen more of this season until these guys are developed at the receiver position. Getting back to Matt Castle, he took eight snaps total. In their first preseason game, seven of which were handoffs. How come the coaching staff is taking such a cautious route with him thus far? Yeah, that's a question. That's that's the question in Kansas City because they did the same thing last year. Very cautious with Matt. I, I don't know if they're trying to hide a, a a deficiency that he has because Tyler Palco, when he comes in, they stretch the field. Ricky Stanzi, when he came in, they stretched the field. So I'm not sure what the deal is uh, with, with Matt. Um, that, that, again, like I said, that's a, that's a mystery to a lot of us around here. But, again, because they brought in these wide receivers, i got to think they're going to open that playbook up 
and he did just take like an eight snaps, and one of those was a fumble snap with the third string center. Um, they have a lot of confidence, a lot of faith in Matt Castle. I mean, he did he did it in New England. You know, that's what got him to Kansas City, and so I think they I think they maybe coddle him a little bit, but I also believe once Matt develops a strong trust in his receivers, he trusts obviously he trusts Dwayne Bow. They're a great combo when they get a chance to hook up. But I think you're going to see that they're going to, they have no choice but to un, un, take the wraps and the cuffs off of him and let him do what we think he can do. How much does it mean to the city that the Chiefs are relevant again? Oh, it, it's huge. I mean, you know, they were great fans when they were losing. And um, last year it was just off the chart. I mean, the fans, I mean, they, they love this team, man. They, and I grew up close to Kansas. I grew up in Lawrence, Kansas, KU country. So I, I am a Chiefs fan, you know, because I grew up in the, in the backyard. But the, the fact that the Chiefs are relevant again, you know, now it would help if the Royals could be relevant, you know. Uh, right? Don't press your luck. There. Don't press your yeah, luck. Yeah, don't press my luck. But they're getting there. But, no, the, this, this is definitely a football town. It's a Chiefs town. And, and win or lose, I got to hand it to the, to the Chiefs fans. They are there, win or lose, rain or shine. And that, which means, yeah, they're critical, but uh, they're, they're critical with love. And, and the fact that they're relevant, once again, uh, speaks a whole lot to the fan, the fan base of Kansas City. Michael Coleman, sports director of KCTV's Channel 5 News. Thank you so much for the time, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you during the season if you're down. Well, you got my number. You can use it anytime, Rick. All right. Thanks, Michael. Take care, man.